I'm Carl, this is Studio In Car, and this is round two of Tim's M5. Let's take a look. Say round two, if you haven't seen round one, this BMW was in a couple of months ago, I had a full system. Um, we didn't really know at the time it was stage one, but there was there was hints, you know, so we did a, a, a high level system in this. So beyond our four drop fit tiers, we have custom tiers. And this was, you know, it was getting along there. So it had a, um, you, you should watch video one before you watch video two. So if you got the inclination, go and do that. Um, this time around uh, in its sort of second wind I suppose Tim wanted to go further you know he's got to the point where he notices the gap between the mid base and the mid range in all BMWs and our way around that if we don't want to modify the dash or the kicks or anything like that is to modify the mat and to put a six inch mid base in front of the seat that fires upwards into the car giving you a much higher stage for your higher mid base and lower mid range as it reflects from the windscreen. We've done it a number of times, it works really well. I know people have their opinions on where they like to put mid base, but th this one's ours in this solution. Ideally, we'd have an on-axis mid base in a kick location every single time, although we were even told that was wrong at some point. Yeah, round two, uh, Astel and Kern DAP mounts, a 3D printed mount in there for his Astel and Kern DAP, which gets rid of this, this huge contraption he had that was holding it. It's really slim, sits in his cup holder, it's removable so he can just take it out uh, if he doesn't want to use his DAP and he wants a cup of coffee, you know. The second, th sorry, third upgrade in step two was to switch from the single TW513 um, in a just a removable box in the back which was always the plan so we could out it like I say if you see episode one you'll see me reference to that you know we'll always go for some from a prefab while we get to know our clients at, at, you know at that level most sort of active boxes and smaller sub boxes that we fit where you know that they, they go way beyond our customers sort of expectations uh, some clients we have just want to go a little bit further so we always put that bit of headroom in there so we can remove that if we want to build something uh, you know hand fabricated which leads me nicely on to where I was actually going we've switched that out for two 10 W6s one of the best subwoofers that money can buy. I, I, I love the sound of the W6. I know it's subjective and it might just be personal to me, but I, th I think it's widely acknowledged as an extremely good SQ subwoofer. We've gone for twin W6s in a box that Stuart's built with a, with a genuine glass back so we can see everything inside. It's a uh, satin texture black inside, which I just love. Plays it down completely, which is great when you go to that level of fabrication just to just to sort of play it down so it's a bit murdered in there S sort of you know some accurately placed leds some accurately placed leds so that we can just lightly show off the subwoofers we don't want to go crazy it's it's it, you know it's crazy enough in a subtle way um that's on a pass through so there's a there's a bulkhead in front of the sub box to separate any airspace from the boot to the car so they work with the seats up they're rebated back so there's airspace there when the seats are up um, they work better with the center console down so the center armrest in the rear and then for how Tim wants to use it with just the seats down all the time they of course they're just in there with you so they work really well and they, they you know they look great as well but that's a byproduct of him wanting just a lot more sort of pressure and speed in his sub base so um, yeah we'll have a whip round and I'll explain each step now so I've tried to light this area up for you as best I can um, it's a little bit dark in here that's probably better but you can see this mid base here with its baffle underneath it and its enclosure below the floor so we do of course have to modify the carpet and this is a very you have to be committed to do this sort of modification. It's not for everybody. Um, it takes a fair amount of time to do, but when it's done, 
we've got a relatively clear path straight up but of course we have sort of scattered areas. This is still a compromised location, just far better than that of the one that's underneath here, which is still underneath here. So this is a four way active front end now. Um, we've got, you know, a narrow bandwidth on the sort of mid lower mid bases under the seat, a wider bandwidth on the mid bases here, which is our sort of mid to upper mid base and lower mid range. And then, um, yeah, we get, a, we get a good response above the dash with this. Simple things like the sort of trimmed baffle and the Alcantara piping around the mat because we have to modify the mat, of course, for the speaker. Uh, and it's always tricky to get the correct sort of design ethic when you're putting something quite elaborate in like this that doesn't belong there. Of course, if you get in here and stamp on it, you're going to stamp on the grill. But when it's your car and your system and your passengers know what you're doing, that isn't an issue, you know. I've driven a lot of cars with mid bases that we've mounted in here and I've never clipped it. That's the mid base, that's that explained. Uh, and it brings into the mix in a BMW a much sort of smoother transition between the mid range and the eight inch under seat mid base, which is completely out of sight. So you get like a, you know, you get a much richer sort of mid range, like lower sort of body of vocals and things like that. It all comes back into the system. Of course, you need more amplification. You need more DSP. You know, it, it's not just a, you can't just add this to your standard system and that's that. So it's, uh, yeah, it's like a level eight sort of upgrade. This is way beyond our standard BMW stuff. And if you haven't seen uh, episode one in the doors, we have the thesis, Violino, Tweeter, and the Voce 2, so the Thesis Voce mid-range in there. So this is effectively a three-way uh, Thesis front end with the Audison AP underseat. Right, so I've plonked around that side, but that mount's quite tricky for you to see because of all the other lines in the car. But this is his Aston Kern SP3000. It does spin all the way around, so you can move it however you see fit. We printed this out of ABS. It's in a, there's pictures on our Instagram. There's um, like a cup holder mount on the bottom and it just, the pressure of the sort of pinches in the cup holder keep it in place. And it is, you know, it's not going anywhere. Tim's done a thousand miles or so in this and it, you know, it's not missed a, a blink. So uh, he did specifically bring this back for us to shoot because when we finished it last time, um, I went on holiday the day after. So I didn't have the time. I like to have a lot of free space around projects like this to, to shoot them. Um, and I just didn't have the time to get it done. So he very kindly brought it back. But he keeps mucking around with his car. He's got some sort of control, some Gucci alarm on here that he can control. And he's on holiday at the moment. And his little camera up there keeps moving. So I know you're watching me. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that's the DAP mount. So this, this is direct to his DSP. He switches over on his DRC in here to, um, there's two opticals in here because we're running a DMI. So his master is optical and then he switches over to optical two. There's a substantial difference in sound quality. It's not, it's not small, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a huge difference in sound quality between the car and the Aston and Kern. Now that doesn't mean that what we've done from an integration point of view isn't far superior to what's in the car. It is miles, miles better. It's just that the AK as a source is a very pure high-end SQ source. Um, you know, and out it goes via fiber into the DSP. So yeah, he can switch to that when he wants to. He listens to this primarily, really. Most of our clients that have a DAP mount uh, tend to listen to their sort of car or use their car play 75% of the time. And this is, you know, you'll have heard me say it before, it's an indulgent source. This is for when you want to play it. You don't want anyone to bother you on your phone. You want a nice little hack and you want to listen to your system at, at its sort of full potential, you know, regardless of whatever volume you're listening to it at. So, yeah, this is a great adaptation, this. And the more we print, the more we'll be, you know, pushing to do... We, we've always put daps in cars, but it's never been as convenient as this it's always been a bit of a pain in the ass where do you put it where do you not bend the fiber optic cable too much and things like that and you do end up with especially with Astel and Kern you end up with these 90 degree fiber optic couplers on the top of the units because AK put all of their fiber on the top you know FIO don't FIO put their fiber on the bottom so in the RS4 if you scooch back to that one a few videos ago, our fiber connection or our digital coax connection is actually on the bottom. So when you slide that into that mount, it's completely clean on the top. So that's another option that you can go for. Um, 
Let's have a look at the sub box now. If there's anything else you want to know about the DAP, other than integration, you know, you're going to have to put your own work in for that. But if there's anything else you want to know about the DAP or what you can use in what scenario and you're coming through here for a system, just drop me a, you know, drop me a message, drop me an email rather than a comment. I don't tend to look at YouTube comments too much because it's just not a very nice place. Right, let's have a look at the sub box. Here's the front of the W6s. It's the front of the sub box. This comes off, of course. This is a like a press fit baffle that just separates. Shush now. Just separates the subwoofer enclosure. Or it doesn't separate the subwoofer enclosure, it just separates the airspace between the boot and the car. Um, and it, you know, and it looks pretty. This is the original floor. We took the floor back and cut it so that you can get access to the system, which is below the back of the subwoofer box. You've seen that in video one, 51K, Quattro, Bit1 HD, DMI, things like that. And of course, you can run this with one seat up, both seats up, all seats up, or the center console down, both seats down. So you, you can just, you see how you feel on the day, you know, <laughs> plenty to go for. <laughs> So I've had to turn the camera brightness up a little bit to get the subwoofer lighting sort of into shot. It's that subtle, like we didn't want it to be super bright, you know, so it's intentionally quite played down. Everything inside there is sort of taped black and held to the top of the sub box so we don't see anything like that inside there. Perfect size for the W6s, common enclosure so we don't get any discrepancies between the two. Some nice bracing and uh, it looked like a load of fun to build, you know, I... Um, I'm a little jealous to be fair that I, they're also wired up with the car so they turn off when they want to. <laughs> yeah, a little jealous to be fair that I don't get to build them is what it is I suppose. But yeah, it looked like loads of fun. So all things aside, it is a effectively an angle back standard sub box. We face the subwoofer's cone forward and then put a glass panel on the back and the inside of the box was painted before the glass panel went on and then a trim panel went over that. So whilst we can go much, much further in terms of fabrication and blend everything to the car and things can look a lot more overt, I think this is perfectly in fitting with the, the sort of classy nature of this M5. Such a fantastic car, this. So that's Tim's M5, all right? I've ran you through all of the bits that we've done in stage two. If you're watching this, and I know I've said it a couple of times throughout the video, and you're wondering why we're not describing all of the rest of the system, it's because there is a stage one. All we've done is um, we've applied products in addition to stage one, so we haven't removed anything or changed anything from stage one. We've just added a few fundamentals to lift the system up. So yeah, if, you know, feel free to go and have a look at that if you haven't already. I know when people suggest that I go back and watch other videos, I just don't. I fight my way through the second video. Um, yeah, anyway, this is, you know, it's topping out. There isn't much further we can go. Maybe a full slew of Class A amps, maybe just chopping and changing different speakers now because the thesis speakers sit, you know, near the top amongst a bunch of other top speakers. So, uh, yeah, I'd say it's done. But then I know Tim and he just has that, that burning desire to change. So, um, yeah. Anyway, I, I love this thing. I'm Carl, this is Studio In Car, and this is Tim's BMW M5. It might be around three. See you later.